I'm going to keep the, uh, the discussion uh, relatively short. So I basically have one, one slide because I had a bit too much wine last night and uh, so uh, probably it, it's better this way. So uh, going back to some of the issues that, that, that came up. So, did he, um, so I want to sort of reflect on a bit on my experience versus view on, on uh, doing quantum optics theory in, at ICANN in the pre-98 era. So what is special about 98? So uh, I could also have put 95 with the, uh, with the uh, discovery of BC. But I think that, that uh, on the theory side, what really made a difference from quantum optics side was really this paper of Peter Zoller and co-workers in uh, essentially analyzing the, the mod insulator transition in, um, in uh, BECs uh, in a lattice. So uh, Peter tells me that actually this paper initially really did not get that many citations, but uh, really took off uh, after, the, um, after the experimental observation. But I think that, that there was already uh, quite a bit of interest, and, and I remember people starting to talking about these uh, these directions at, at uh, KITP during the programs. So, but let me say that that uh, when I was at ICAMP in these times, uh, and I don't want to offend anyone, but but basically the quantum optics theory that uh, that at least many of us did, not all of, uh, not everyone, was mainly focusing on this. Uh, relatively simple Markovian dissipative dynamics uh, of, of uh, two or three level emitters, either a single emitter or many emitters. And uh, again, I mean, there are exceptions that, that like DK phase transition and, and, and what have you. But uh, what is nice about this is that I, I really don't want to belittle uh, what it entails because it has two great advantages in my view. The first one is that, that the, given the techniques were relatively simple, it really allowed, at least uh, for some in the community, as, as uh, including myself, to make a link between theory and experiment. So I didn't feel uncomfortable, in, uh, even though I was trained as, as predominantly as an experimentalist, uh, in doing theoretical work. And I think uh, the opposite was also true, and I, I guess the, the most spectacular example is, is Misha. Um, so, so this, I think it, there is a lot of merit in that, because uh, I think it is really very healthy for the community to be able to uh, link the, uh, the theoretical efforts directly with, with, uh, with the experiments. So I should also say that another sort of a lasting uh, uh, effect of, of this uh, dealing with non-equilibrium driv driven dissipative dynamics is really uh, sort of something we're seeing today because one of the more interesting questions in condensed matter theory is uh, non-equilibrium dynamics of many body systems. So in this case, this was a simple uh, uh, two-level systems, but, but uh, in essence, the, some of the techniques or the direction comes from from this time. And again, it's, it's no uh, brainer to say that, that after 98, and you might uh, disagree on the, on the date, that quantum optics theory evolved uh, in, uh, in new ways. I mean, first, from the BEC side, there was uh, stronger connections to atomic and molecular physics were developed. Uh, this, actually, even though optical physics is, is grouped typically with atomic and molecular physics, at least when I was here, I thought that there were still sizable differences, again, in the kind of questions and the techniques that were used. And I think this really changed with, uh, with BEC uh, due to the importance of, of the interactions and an accurate calculation of, of interatomic potentials. And then uh, another big change, of course, came with, with the quantum information theory. So, um, so in essence, I, I think I would only be repeating what has been said uh, now that uh, yesterday, uh, that if I say that, that the, the, the field is in very good shape now, it's very exciting, it also still carries uh, these links between theory and experiment. And I think that um, so it is quite appropriate then, then, uh, that, that, that today's speakers in, in the session that I'm uh, sort of leading 
uh, are two young theorists who were both, I can, educated in, uh, in various stages of their career and who really do make links uh, between theory and experiment. And particularly in, in Jake's case, he does run a group which, uh, which does cutting edge theory, but also uh, uh, has an experimental uh, component to it. So he's going to tell us about his efforts to combine photonics and phononics. So that's another common theme for this morning. Um, the emphasis on applying the quantum optics techniques to mechanical motion. And the second one is this, uh, is the second topic is this spectacular idea that uh, he developed with uh, Mamad on, on implementing uh, topological states uh, of light in a relatively simple setting. So nice and easy that, that, that they went ahead and, and uh, realized this experimentally. So uh, the second talk would be on, uh, P, uh, by Peter Rabel, who is going to focus exclusively and on nanomechanical systems coupled to uh, embedded emitters and how these can be uh, used to realize transducers and, and really providing a new tool uh, for quantum information <coughs> processing. So, as promised, that's it. So I'll